talk to you about the smooth stone. First, my path to salvation was different in its approach, yet personal, as Jesus knows us first. A group of fine people from Bethel Gospel, Gospel Assembly, like my home church, St. Luke's Episcopal in the Bronx. It was a good location for production of various skits, the theme of witnessing the Lord. As I learned my part about witnessing, a funny thing became, began to happen with him. One of the play's advisors helped me with further understanding my change within. I prayed the sinner's prayer where I gave my life over to Jesus that very day. A new sense of peace came over me and I truly felt that I belonged in my house of worship. Now I really know that feeling was God's grace helped me to belong, belong to him by the power of the Holy Ghost. I tried to become the part I was acting, a true witness for the Lord. Unfortunately, after a time, I began to have a selfish relationship with Christ. All I wanted to do was keep Jesus to myself. Thinking it was an exclusive club just for me and him, I began living in a form of salvation, but not living out the Great Commission. 
I wasn't sharing Jesus with others where they would in turn testify to others about Jesus' goodness in life. I found a smooth stone, which I later found out is called hematite. A smooth silver stone, small enough to fit in the palm of your hand. I carried it everywhere. I walked and began to depend on it to give me strength. Instead of holding on to that idol, I didn't realize that all I had to do was to count on Jesus and believe in our rock, of, our rock in the weary land, the chief cornerstone of our faith. This really became clear when on a cold winter's day, I was walking in Midtown when someone asked me for help. Having a form of outward salvation and ignorance, I told him I would pray for him. But look at God. As the person was surprised at my answer, a good soul of a man gave him the help that he needed right away. He reminded me and taught me by saying simple yet powerful words in hindsight. It could have been me. We all need a little help sometimes. This lesson has many insights. Faith without works is dead. If you have the means to give and you are led by the Holy Spirit, give without looking back. Prayer is important, but you have to be ready in and out of Sedan to witness for the Lord by your actions as well as your words. When the situation arises, pray in your heart, asking the Lord to guide you in your decision. His yes will be yes, and his no will be no. The fact that you ask for help pleases him, for he knows your prayers before you ask them. That, my friends, is the meaning of humility, knowing you cannot do anything without God having a hand in it. As you lower your mind, God will elevate your situation in his own time. Being part of Christ's body, we all have our parts to play, none any more important than, than the other. It all must work in harmony for the body to function. As we know our gifts come from God and not we ourselves, so that we will not boast of our ability saying, I did this great thing, or no one could have done this but me, which is a, which is a trick of the enemy, trying to separate you from your call. That's how he lost his job, wanting to take over, thinking he was indispensable and that nobody could do his job any better than not even God himself. Oops, you got to go. And we all know where the enemy wound up. Once we understand and know for ourselves that we can't make it without Jesus, he'll make a way out of no way. And most importantly, he will show you the way to truth and light. Not only through his word, but through a community of fellow believers who will help guide you to the truth. And the truth will set you free, for he who the Son sets free is truly free indeed. Amen.